Hi everyone. Yesterday I talked about three options for today. The third was that markets will decisively beat 22500, which has been a good resistance level. Market has already attempted it few times already. That will be broken. This actually happened today. Markets opened with a gap up, nearly touching 22600, scaring a lot of people with positions at a resistance of 22600. However, this came down significantly suddenly and then markets were stable for a while. I had mentioned that around lunch markets will pick up again. That is where the expiry related transactions start picking up steam. Around one o'clock is when the market started going up again and then they never look back for that day. They consolidated in a narrow range of 22500 to 22600. Note that with a closing above 22500, finally bulls have breached the fortress. They were not able to conquer for several times. Now technically there is no resistance for the bulls on the upside. Bears may actually have to hide for some time till some adverse event happens. The wicks went down further, which means while the markets are going up, there was calm and stability again. A good sign for investors in general. I'm trying to revise the time I showed this video by one hour. For the simple reason, I'm missing a lot of IPL matches and people who watch my videos also start watching IPL. I want to release this video half an hour before the IPL match starts. FIA and DI data was not out yet when I started the shoot. I'll put up an update if the data is released before I release the video. However, I expect that today DIIs might have sold actually. FIIs may have bought a bit or maybe they would be also selling. Today's data is a little confusing. It does not look like heavy buying from the bigger participants. Today's rally in fact was IT primarily and banks. IT probably took cues from NASDAQ from yesterday. Banks are being led by HDFC sixth straight update. Today it was up more than 3%. 3% for HDFC means a lot for the index. Like I mentioned yesterday, gold breached 70,000. However, it could not hold above 70,000. This is also something I mentioned. 70,000 was a resistance. A lot of profit booking came in as soon as gold crossed 70,000. Now gold may become range bound for some time. The next uncertainty is when it starts marching towards 75,000 and then 80,000. Bitcoin has started rising a bit again. Last two sessions have been up, including today's one, of course. I perhaps sold MRPL yesterday at the right time. Yesterday, the windfall tax was increased on petroleum products. The entire oil pack was down today. In a major news, HDFC has declared that a lot of FIIs have reduced their positions in the stock in the last quarter. This is no new news. We have been seeing that data of FII sell and DII buy, but the number is alarming. Nearly 4.5% reduction by FIIs. This is of course a big risk HDFC always carries after the merger because foreign participation is way too high in the overall entity. There was a news on money control today that a trillion rupee club has 80 participants now. This is a bit misleading for me for the simple reason that I strongly believe that a lot of stock prices that have gone up are on account of the currency printing excess currency we have in circulation which is reflecting in higher prices led by high inflation, leading to high sales number and hence high profit numbers. I call this debasing of the currency phenomena that everything which was worth probably 100 rupees till about two years back, that is about 200 to 250 now. That does not reflect the 6-7% inflation. That's the real markup in prices that is happening in the price of stuff we buy as well as the stock prices. I would be really happy if this number is also reflecting in the GDP growth that becomes double. One bad news that came in on the consumption side was from Dabur, which reported reduced consumption numbers. As a result, the entire FMCG pack beat Nifty 50 or Nifty Next 50. Everyone nearly fell. Another news came in from NSC, which is now ready for an IPO. In NSC, 10.7% is held by LIC. Nearly 9% is held by SPI Capital and SBI itself. Just as a disclaimer, I myself hold a bit of NSC. I bought it as a pre-IPO. This will probably be my third success story. The first one is already live, Tata Technologies. The second one where DRHP has been filed is Xigo. Some money being made there as well for now. The third one will be NSC. Right now I'm very bullish about the IT pack in general. This bullishness however may change any time based upon the data that will come in in the result season or from the US. For now my favorite stock is Persistent in cash market as well as in FNO. I took some options trade in Persistent today. Usually I only trade in Nifty, not even in Bank Nifty. Today, just on conviction, I took a trade. The main position is called a bull put spread where I'm supposed to benefit from the decay and collect some premium. The middle one is a short term two day strategy. Simply, I bought some call options. This I'll not take beyond 10 or 11 a.m. tomorrow. 
for the simple reason that the decay will eat any profits I may get. This is only for educational purpose. Once I square off the middle position tomorrow, I have a potential upside of under 7,000 rupees and a likely profit of 22% if persistent remains up going forward. Update on some of the trades that I have been carrying. All these are pure trades lasting few days. None of them is long term investment. I bought a bit of Canara Bank today. Vedanta reported its aluminum capacity going up. Took some intraday position in Vedanta today. Though the profit may look minuscule like 3 rupees, about a percent or maybe slightly higher. But considering a margin of 30,000, this was nearly 3% gain in a single day. Hindustan Copper has been going up significantly last few days. Today I finally gave up on waiting and bought a bit of it. Let's see how the trade goes. Right now it's in slight loss. I bought Ujjivan Small Finance yesterday. Today it was giving me about 6% profit. So I sold it off. About 4 rupees gain in a single day. Good profit for trading. One small tip I will give here is never put trades on absolute boundaries. For example, today I had put Varun Beverages on sale for 1545. It went to 1544.95. 5 pesos short. So put your trade at a slight lesser value than an absolute amount. Very difficult to explain this phenomena. It does happen that the round figures typically don't happen and the stock goes up or down and falls just short of these boundaries. It feels really sad at times when you miss out on a trade for 5 pesa. Quick peek on Nifty 50, fair distribution of red and greens. However, the index was dominated by the gain in HDFC Bank and ICICI. If you take HDFC and ICI out, the day would have been red. Nifty next 50 is mostly red, which means there was a broad base selling. That is why I feel that DIS today would have sold. FIIs may have sold or just bought a little amount of it, including HDFC. US had an unusual green day yesterday. All major heavyweights in US were green. The VIX was down 1%. Bond yields continued to go up. The Fed may want to look at what is happening in the broader market right now because higher bond yields may create a havoc. It did create one when the bond yield shot up through the roof last time. Few banks went bankrupt, just for context. It's getting increasingly difficult to decide what direction to trade in in the market. At the end of day, it is easy to say today was a good day, today was a bad day. However, the conviction required to get into a trade is getting very, very hard these days. Though Nifty has broken 22,500 resistance finally, which should imply bullishness, I'll probably not take any further new positions for next week for now in cash or FNO. I'll try and close whatever positions I have and then take it from there on Monday. Hope you liked today's episode. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.